Hello everyone, in this video we are going to go ahead and begin texturing our character. Um, a couple things right off the bat, I'm going to select my uh, mesh and open up my UV editor and tools, move UV shell tool, I'm going to highlight all of these and then I'm going to go to image UV snapshot I'm going to run a browse and name this uvlayout.tga I don't need the extra extension and then click save and then my size X and Y 2048 by 2048 and then go ahead and hit uh, apply and close in this case I'm overwriting an image uh, so I'm going to click overwrite yours should just save right out if you haven't already done that and then I'm going to close this and now in Photoshop I'm going to I'm actually going to close out of this one and now file open and textures and UV layout and there's my UVs. As you can see I already have a few images open um, that I'm working with or going to be working with here shortly uh, to begin the texturing process. Um, one of the things we can do right away is file uh, oh excuse me before we get there go back into Maya select the object uh, one of the things you want to make sure you have turned on is OBJ export. So go to uh, if you don't already or haven't already done this, go to Windows Settings Preferences Plugin Manager, and then scroll down to the point where you see OBJ export.mll. You can hit refresh and close. Now do File Export Selection with your mesh selected. We're not going to worry about the eyes just yet. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. I named mine Character Base Mesh.obj and export selection and yes okay now from here um, what we're gonna do is we'll go into our oh, we'll go into uh, our uh, Photoshop since we have our UVs and our um, uh, OBJ exported one of the things, if you um, have never opened up a 3D file in Photoshop before, in order to do this you need to go to Edit, Preferences, and we'll go to Performance. And make sure you turn on this little Use Graphics Processor and click OK. You will need to close out of Photoshop and reopen Photoshop after clicking that button in order for this to work. Okay. So I'm going to go File, Open. So make sure if you don't, make sure you close Photoshop after clicking that button and reopen it. Otherwise, um, good chance this will not open properly. Now go to Character Base Mesh and Open. And click OK. This should be all good. And if it's not, I guess just match my settings. It should automatically um, set this up for you. Uh, and then click OK. It'll say Reading Wavefront OBJ Format. You might get a little pop-up window that says, would you like to switch to 3D? Click Yes. Um, if not, go over here in the drop-down menu in the top right corner and go to 3D. And you'll see that our object is in here. Now, I'm going to... Um, I want to try something really quickly. I'm going to switch to my brush tool and draw directly on it. It says one or more materials in this 3D layer are missing, a diffuse texture. New diffuse texture will be created for those materials to enable editing. Click OK. And click OK. Now, it should be initial shading group here. I'm going to double click on it. And you'll see that the UVs are here. One of the things, uh, it looks skewed. And in view, pixel aspect ratio, um, don't want it to be square. 
I'm gonna try reset. Just click OK. OK. That didn't work. Now we'll do one more thing. Pixel aspect ratio. Let's try wide. Yes, widescreen. And now that should match. Another thing I would like to do is go to image, image size. And in here, I want to change this to 2048. I'm going to unclick this by 2048 and click OK and see what happens. Now it's still a little skewed. In this, I'm going to try to go back to square and see what happens. There we go. Um, I hope this works right. Now in my UV layout, control A, control C, I'm going to go back to this initial shading group, control V. I'm going to go back to my character base mesh. Turning off, maximize, I'm going to click OK. And you'll see now that our uh, UVs actually line up right on the character. So all I did uh, to create that new default texture, I don't know why it's doing that, um, but um, anyway, you just click the brush tool, click on the character, and um, it'll create a new one for you. And then just follow those same steps using the little arrow tool here you can a uh, little uh, move tool I guess this normally is yeah move tool um, up here in 3d mode you could select these different tools we're simply at the moment just gonna mess with the rotate um, this gives us a little bit of a preview in our file and as we continue working we'll cover more of this sort of interface um, as we go along Now in my initial shading group in here, what I can do is, um, you're seeing all this sort of, uh, uh, I'll call it noise, and that's really just the original UVs laid over. Um, if I set this to like, let's just say 50%, you'll see that it's just the, uh, by default, it shows the um, UVs in this actual file. So if I were to hide it, you'll see that they're all there. OK, and now I can begin to texture this character. Um, so you can essentially, I'm going to create a new layer down here, layer 2, a little button down here, layer. And you can begin to just draw on this as you please. Now another way to do this is um, I'm going to start with the shirt fabric. I'm going to press control A, control C, and actually even yet I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to copy that layer, just click and drag this one to the new layer. And I'm going to do image adjustment and let's try hue saturation. And because my shirt is more on the green side, might be able to no it doesn't look like it's colorized and then I can adjust it I have a pretty bright green shirt on in my reference I think I'll go with that color I just adjusted the um, hue and saturation and the lightness of it and I'm gonna click OK now from here I'm going to press control A, control C on my new layer and going back to my base character mesh I set my UVs at 50% so it's a little bit lighter now and actually back in here I have my layer 2 already selected every time you click back and forth between the two um, you should get a little circular bar like a loading screen because they're still connected if you don't it means it's not connected um, all you do at that point is you just close out of this and then re-double click on that. Now, it might happen as I'm working, but for the, mo uh, for the moment, I'm just going to go ahead and um, begin 
um, texturing this guy. So I can zoom in and out using this tool. This is pan. Um, this will rotate the uh, the camera or roll it, roll the 3D camera, um, and zoom the 3D camera. So you could do something like that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control V. I'm going to press Control T, and I'm simply just going to start to. And then I'm going to press Enter. I'm also before I do this, I'm going to press Control A and Control C again. I know this is confusing a little bit. Um, it doesn't matter too much once you have the base uh, texture done, like I just showed you. Um, and one more point. Uh, I grabbed a couple of these textures off of textures.com. Um, if you don't already have an account, go ahead and create one. Uh, all you need is an email, um, a password and probably like a username and then verify your email it should be pretty straightforward um, no different than probably creating a uh, social media account um, which probably most of you if not all of you have at least one of them um, but really it and and same thing with like creating an email or something um, that's all you need email password uh, and that's about it and verify your email so you get so many uh, credits a week or a month. I don't remember what exactly what it is. And then this is all educational, uh, copyright free. You're allowed to use this for education purposes. Um, if you get a paid membership, uh, I know that they do use these textures on professional studio work. Uh, I think the biggest name I've seen is Pixar. Um, so just to give you an idea uh, that many, many uh, studios do actually use this specific website and formerly known as cgtextures.com so that's where I grabbed a couple of these textures from back in Photoshop I've copied it from this size because I want to maintain it at this size and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go ahead and merge down uh, if you've taken my 3d modeling one course uh, this is basically old news for you and then double check to make sure that it went on your newest layer which it did okay so I'm gonna go back here control V and I'm just gonna start to I'm not too worried about any other part right now other than this shirt um, I'm gonna right click and do merge down and I'm going to continue this process just to get the start of the shirt down. Merge down. And this is all going on my base layer for my shirt. Okay, I'm not too worried about the face or the arms or any other part of this yet. Control V. Kind of just sort of getting this started. Right click, merge down. And I'm going to repeat this process all the way through until I get sort of like a base texture um, that I like. Now one thing you'll see is that um, I'm going to go ahead and finish off the other side. Right here, right click, merge down. I'm just rotating around this character and sort of merging down these uh, images. One thing you can do is if you click on the light, this little light source, and then you can rotate the light around and there we go and now I've got my light on the back here so I can see better and they uh, disengage from rotating the light just double click in this area anywhere off and then you should be good to be able to rotate around again I'm gonna press control V again and I'm just repeating this process until I have uh, a base cloth texture over this entire guy and it looks like okay 
for whatever reason it's not merging as well on the back part right this second but I'm just gonna keep going at it and see what happens okay so there's one of two possibilities there's a possibility that this this um, is no longer linked and that's why it's not working right so I'm gonna close out of this I'm gonna click no don't worry everything that you did previously should be uh, stored in there um, depending on how far you went um, but I'm gonna click on my initial shading group one more time okay it's still all on that layer go back here and this is one way to uh, sort of reconnect the links merge down and I'm not getting any uh, good merge I don't know why it's not working all too well but I'm gonna just keep trying it and for whatever reason it's not reading the merge now so what I'll do is in here I can simply I just pasted that in um, start to fill in the blanks as needed and I'll show you what I mean here in a second now these don't need to be perfect um, just give it your best shot um, and I'm just pasting these in and that's pretty good so far I believe this is the sleeve oh maybe not this is actually the sleeve here one sleeve and where's my other sleeve this is it and you're gonna wanna make sure that these seams are actually going the right way in which case this one I need to rotate in this direction alright and now I'm gonna go back to my character base mesh and it should fill in everything else alright and again let me zoom out a little bit I'm just pressing control plus or minus to zoom in and out I can rotate my light around and then double click off and this just gives us a pretty simple preview of this now the next thing I want to do I'm not worried about any of the other parts of this body yet you just rotate around you should see um, what I'm gonna do at this point is I have my MCC PNG and my tech camp I'm gonna copy this And actually, before I do that, I can take all these. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to combine all of these up to here. And I'm going to press Control e to merge. So basically, everything that I've projected up to this point on the actual shirt isn't even there, um, at least visible, because I put all these layers above it. If I drag that over you'll be able to see it and that should fill in the differences um, whatever looks better for you um, and it doesn't look like it updated so that's perfect it didn't update um, I'm gonna close out of this I'm gonna hit no and then I'm gonna double click on my initial shading group one more time and you'll see none of those uh, layers were merged I'm gonna highlight all of these layers again pressing control E to merge them and then I'm going to drag it underneath and let this hopefully reload you'll see it reload and you'll see the texture just slightly so that's just how to get sort of started with that um, we'll do some touch-ups later to clean it up uh, but now going back in here what I want to do is we'll just call this uh, uh, shirt projection and we'll call this uh, shirt 
layout because I just laid it into the screen by copying and pasting it. And then in here, oh, one more thing I want to do, I want to create a new layer. And this is going to be my MCC logos. I'm going to paste this in and simply drag it down to fit. And I'd say that's pretty good. I'm going to press enter. And then I'm going to right click and do merge down. And it should merge right on there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the uh, MCC, control A, control C, going back to my character, control V, and here I'm going to oh, make it a little bit smaller. Hopefully this projects well enough. Um, something like that. I'm going to press enter and right click and merge down. It doesn't look like it merged very well. So he, this is where I'll go back into my initial shading group. One thing I want to show you is that when I merged that down on my mesh, it took all that distortion um, from the actual UVs and sort of, uh, how do I say this, kind of cleaned it up for us. To, to look right in the 3D model viewport so it, it looks like a perfect um, like stamp on there if you will oh it does it actually did go in there I just didn't see it it's uh, tiny let me see yeah so I'm okay with that um, like I said this doesn't need to be perfect this is just kind of a learning thing um, and then the other thing is if I wanted to I'll take this shirt projection and bring it underneath and maybe all I want to do is just have the uh, some of the things projected like the logo here and some of the text or something um, alright so uh, one of the things I really like to do uh, on the shirt projection layer is I'm going to go to something called layer layer mask reveal all and in here, under Reveal All, black and white are the two colors that hide and show things. So, in which case, I'm going to go to black. Black hides things. And then here, I'm just going to paint these out. It keeps all that information in there. However, um, if I ever needed to re-show it, I switch to white, and then it'll show again. So we're just creating a mask here. Okay, and I'm just going to take it off the parts that I don't need it on. And also with the shirt layout, layer, layer mask, reveal all. And in this part, I'm going to hide these using the black paintbrush here and just sort of take it off of any other additional UVs I have on here. And this one. And when, when you want to make adjustments to these layers, just make sure you click on, on the, the mask, masking layer. Excuse me. And I'm going to go through and just sort of clean up these spots. So it's a little technical. Uh, perfectly honest, it is a little technical uh, on, on showing you this. But I'm showing you the hard way first. Um, and then you can go, always go back and sort of do anything uh, the easier way. So this is, and this is a really useful tool. Um, and if I don't show you this first, uh, I I feel like you may not utilize it as uh, much as possible uh, because it is really cool. So there is that. Now if I go back here, hopefully it'll update. Okay, and now you'll see that I just have it on my shirt layer here. Okay. Now. The next thing I can do is the jeans, and I can also do the face, but I'll get to the face later. And in here, I will, um, I think this is logo, Oop. MCC logo. I'm going to create a new layer. And the old-fashioned way to do this 
is to simply um, let's just say for the arms I'm going to use a skin color but we, we really like to get some of that photo realism in um, where when possible and let's just try to search for a sort of skin tone here uh, as an example I don't know that might be a little too much I don't know you can always go ahead and simply those are my jeans whoops this is my arm sort of paint these uh, tones in you can do it for the hands also and then just make sure you don't go into any other region if you do you can always also use your eraser tool I'll increase the brush size on that all right um, and you can go ahead and do all that for those and I'm gonna go back and you'll see that it up updates and the arm I have uh, some shadowing going on that's why it looks a little pixelated but the color is there and you'll see it's starting to fill in so that's another way to do it um, personally it looks better when you get some of those textures on there but we'll go back into uh, that in a second um, another thing we can do before I get into the jeans Da, 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 da. Modeling references open. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to control A, control C. And then here, actually, I'm going to create a new layer. And then here, I'm going to zoom in just on the face. I'm just pressing control plus. This can be a tricky spot, but we'll give it a bet our best shot. And then I'm going to press control V. And I'm actually going to have to zoom out now. Didn't realize. I'm going to try to just project my face directly on here. Another thing I like to do is bring my opacity down so I can line it up properly. and you can get it maybe just right if you follow your reference closely enough it's gonna look a little weird but let's just see what happens now I'm gonna bring it back up to a hundred percent I'm also going to press enter and I'm gonna press control A control C just to copy what I have here and then right click and merge down and now you'll see that I have a uh, somewhat of my face on there um, I'll go into my diffuse in here and I'll create a layer layer mask reveal all using my brush tool I'm just gonna paint that information out and then here you're gonna see some weird texture stretching I'm gonna just kind of erase this part down here because it's kind of a little too much and sort of right around the head also because all I really kind of want to focus on is just the face because I'm getting all this strange texture stretching and now I can also come in here using uh, some other tools I could use like the clone stamp tool or the spot healing brush uh, clone stamp and on this layer I can start to sort of grab some of these colors fill it in I'm holding alt with my brush tool selected to sort of I'm going to undo that one Um, maybe over here 
I'll start to fill this part in. And then here, that's sort of the mustache region, so I'm just going to try to grab this section here. Start to fill some of that in. Uh, I don't like that spot being that bright. And then maybe over here, I grab a color, sort of fill that in. Okay, so I just kind of did the face really quickly. And it should reload. And as I rotate around, you'll see I'm starting to get a face on here. Um, okay. So I want you to continue this process all the way through um, as best as you can. Um, I'm just showing you some more advanced tricks to do this um, in order to get this to be right. Uh, as far as uh, maybe let's just do the ear. Um, file open side reference control A control C here I want to swap uh, rotate around control V control T to edit transform and then I'm going to bring this smaller and bring the opacity to 50 and then zoom in and then I'm simply going to try and match my reference as best as possible and you'll see because I used my face as an actual reference that the image should line up pretty well at this point, I'm mostly focused on getting the ear to match. And then from here, before I merge it down, I want to create a new layer. And I'm hoping that this will. Ah, uh, because I never pressed control. Uh, because I didn't create the layer beforehand, it just didn't um, save. So I got to resize this again. No big deal and zoom in. Very repetitive process here. And then it's a little too small. That might be a little too big. Something like that should work. I'll press Enter. I'm also going to Control A, Control C, save this most recent uh, resizing if I need to redo it, which I will for the other side. And that's why it's not matching because it's I've distorted it. I must have not been holding Shift the entire time. I'm going to just delete that layer and go back from the beginning. Side face reference. Control C. Delete layer two, yep. Okay, try that one more time. Holding shift, I'm just keeping the same scale and proportions to this. I think that's pretty good. Press enter. Also going to control A and control C, select all and copy. And then change back my opacity and right click, merge down. I'm hoping that layer saved so I uh, from earlier. 
go back in here and it looks like it did okay and then using a layer layer mask reveal all I can start to sort of get rid of some of that uh, texture stretching here and here is going to be my actual neck and then here I'm going to get rid of some of that region something like that and go in and fill in this region using my clone stamp tool I'll just stick with oops In some places, I may Oop. undo that. I don't want the ear to totally be um, gone. And here, maybe I'll include some of the hair. something like that then I'll zoom out and go back to my character base mesh to see how it looks and then I'll rotate around to the other side you'll see I have some weird things happening in the center of the face so going back in here and that's right here I'll go to my reveal all mask here and just sort of erase some of that from the center point in here okay go back to my character base this is really the longest way to do this um, and you'll see that you start to fill in the rest of the features of the face while doing this um, I think it's cool to have some type of photo reference on there it really helps uh, when modeling and things. So I'm going to go ahead and do a control V and edit, transform, flip horizontal because I'm doing the other side and now I'm simply going to put this on the opposite side here trying to line it up on the ear for the most part and that seems pretty good and 100% and right click and merge down and it didn't work very well so let's go ahead and see if I can maybe rotate my light around and do that one more time edit transform flip horizontal change this to 50% so that's pretty close and right click merge down and it's not working how I want it to edit transform flip horizontal as you can see it is a little finicky but do your best okay enter I'm going to change this back to 100 percent control A control C so I don't have to redo everything and right click merge down and it's really not grabbing a hold of the face very well uh, let's go switch here and it could be because I was on my actual layer mask instead of the mesh so that's a possibility let's see if it's still connected looks like it is and now I have to 50 replace this okay change this back to 100 right click merge down 
Again, it's still not coming out too well. Maybe if I zoom in or something. And I just use Control Plus for that. I feel like the face is the most important part to sort of project when doing this type of project. Because you can see the shirt sort of repeats itself, whereas the face does not. Let's try it again. Zoomed in a bit and see if that helps at all. And it's really not helping at all. Okay. Maybe... If I use this tool, oh, and then we're going to pan up. And let's try it again. At this point, I'm just going to try to merge it down and see if it works at all instead of all this resized kind of thing and it's not. So, in a case when that happens, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to do Edit, Transform, Flip Vertical. I'm going to zoom out. And then just sort of mirror it on the other side the best I can. Basically, I'm just going to line up the ear. And then I think that should be pretty close. All right. And using... Whoa. Undo that. Going on to my layer mask. I'm going to just sort of erase some of these things. Erase the hair, too, in this region this region, out in this one also, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. And now, with that, grabbing my clone stamp tool, because I'm not too super concerned with everything on here. Oop. Sorry about that. I'm going to undo. I'm just going to grab a skin tone. Try it here. It may have lost link, so maybe I'll go back and see what happens. Okay. It looks like this one might need to be shifted a little bit, so let's go ahead and bring that down. Let's see if anything happens. A little bit more maybe. Go back. See how that affects it. And you'll see that it's just shifting ever so slightly. Go back. Okay, and let's go ahead and rotate around and see what this side looks like. So I'm starting to get this face filled in pretty well. Um, oop, I just zoomed out instead of using the proper zoom tool. Hope I was hoping that whoa, it would work, but uh, it didn't work the way I wanted it to. And let's pan down get this whole character back into view. All right. Now, getting back into my diffuse, using my layer mask. Just go ahead and start to erase whatever not erase, just mask out anything that is unneeded. And then we can go back here. Alright. And I've start got the start to this character going. 
Um, I can also do the genes. So, I have the jean back pocket. I have the fabric. Oh, that's my shirt fabric. Uh, jeans fabric. At this point, I'm just going to really grab the elliptical tool and grab a portion of this and copy it. And then I'm going to go back to my character ba uh, base mesh. And in my actual initial diffuse, I'm going to create a new layer. Put this one on top now, just so I know which one I'm working with. I'll go back here. It should give you the little swirly thing. And then I'm going to rotate. And then Control V. And this might, I might want this to be a little bit smaller. Something like that. Merge down. And you can merge this all the way down throughout the mesh. If it seems like it's too big, scale it smaller. Okay. Control A, Control C, so this way it keep the same scale and merge down. And I'm going to repeat this process all the way through. And then just double check that you are putting it on the correct layer. So I have a new layer. It looks like it's working pretty well. And then just repeat this process all the way through if you'd like. Um, I personally like the projection texturing. I think it works a little bit better than just laying it on there. But as you saw with the shirt and the face, that sometimes you just have to do it that way. Um, and just repeat this process through. Merge down. Merge down. And yours does not need to match your reference exactly. Right click, merge down. Uh, you can do different kinds of textures. You don't have to make it whatever you're wearing in the image. Um, right click, merge down. I do this simply to create sort of like a base texture and then I'll go in and clean up the rest of it as needed. I'm just really trying to cover some of that texture stretching that you're seeing right here. Merge down. And then at the end of this I'll go in and I'll start to um, merge down. Include some of the seam work because I have that seam texture. Okay. Follow this process all the way through. If it works, that's great. If not, I don't uh, just go ahead and do it the same way we did the shirt. I'm going to see if it works this time. If not, I'll go back and uh, just adjust it as needed. And it doesn't look like it's working there. Let's try this side of the leg. Right click, merge down. And it doesn't look like it's working too well here either, but I'll just try my best and see how it turns out. This is a really repetitive process, but um, it can be when, it, when it's working 100% right, it works really, really well. I don't know why one side's working, the other side's not. Um, that one seemed to project pretty well. Doesn't seem like the light really affects it, but um, it seems like certain areas are just not working well for it. 
Um, in which case, I'm just going to try to rotate around a little bit and see what happens. And it's it's just not picking up in that region. So I'll go back over here. And then what you can do is just simply fill in the genes using the same technique we used last time. Again, you don't have to uh, really bring in your OBJ file um, in order to texture it, but it does. It, you won't be able to project textures without um, using this technique. Um, another thing is also I'm just going to cover the parts that need to be covered. Some of this has some texture stretching. Extra stretching. Texture. All right, go through here and just continue this process. something like that and then I also have this one where I'm gonna need to rotate it this way I'm gonna copy that do the best I can to match this up right. Okay. probably need one more down here. All right. Go back here. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it's saved. It did. It's reloading. All this information should fill in. Rotate around. And you'll see that you got the genes started. Um, going back here, I'm going to combine all these layers into one up to this point. Control E. This is Gene's layout, because that's the one I just kind of laid in here. This is Gene's projection. This is face side. I'm just going to call that face side one. Face side two. Front face. Okay, and then on my jeans layout, layer, layer mask, reveal all. I'm going to get rid of it on the shoes. I can't there. Over here I can on the face. Make sure you get rid of that. Okay, and then on the shirt. 
and then if I went a little too far on that one I can just use the white one um, and then on this one jeans projection layer layer mask reveal all and then make sure that in both of these you're making sure that you get these off of any other mesh I'm gonna go to my jeans projection take that off the shoe off the shoe and that looks pretty good so far go back to my character base mesh and I gotta get it off the bottom of the so it's off my shoes I gotta get it off the bottom of the shirt now and that would be here grab my brush and just hide that off and go back into my character base mesh and it should re-update and that should come off of the shirt and it did. All right. So, um, up to this point, I'm going to save it. All right. So, in order to save your texture map in here, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll even turn this on at yeah, it's at 50. I'll make it 75. All right. So, I want to show you how to save this out. This will be UV. Play out, and this is we'll just call it arm paint. Oh, arm pain. <laughs> All right, come on. There we go. Paint, enter because I just kind of painted that in. And in order to save this, I'm going to hit uh, file, save as, and then. I'm going to locate where I want to save it to. Now by default it'll be at a PSB. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it out as a Photoshop file and I'm going to call it uh, uh, Diffuse Map and press enter and click OK. I'm also going to, so I saved out the oh, Give it a moment to save. Okay, Control Shift S. I'm going to save it out also as a TGA. Diffuse map TGA, save. 32 bits, click OK. And now, after I saved it, what you notice is that um, the UVs fell off. So, um, and you even see some of these areas that I missed. Um, I'm not too worried about it at the moment. It looks like I forgot to mask some of this region out. But the most important thing is, is that we go into our um, Maya file. Eventually, we're going to uh, put this onto an Arnold shader uh, for rendering purposes. But for right now, I think it's just a little bit easier to assign a Blin or a Lambert. Uh, I'm going to assign a Blin and I'm just going to turn my reflectivity all the way down and I'm going to bring the specularity down just so it's not so shiny and glossy. Um, that gets fixed by adding a specular map uh, but at the moment um, let's just go all the way to Blin 1 and also great to run a delete all by type history so this way you don't have all that information and then in our color select file image name diffuse map tga click open press 6 on your keyboard and you'll see that your character is starting to take texture uh, information. So what I want you to do is um, basically complete the entire texture however you'd like. Um, I'll post another video on uh, how to do this uh, uh, without the projection um, but I feel like the projection helps a lot and um, you'll see obviously I haven't finished I have the feet to do and the face to finish um, 
but this is just a great way to sort of get started with that. Um, if you have any questions, inbox me. You'll see that we just went ahead and textured in the ears to give it that uh, look. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, there's the start of our texturing process. Um, some of the other things I would do is take uh, to project the arms. I would just take some photo reference of my arms and then use that. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's about that. So um, projection texturing. Um, tips and uh, if you have any questions again just shoot me a message on inbox and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it was super helpful and thanks for watching